and welcome. We are here today at St. Clair College hosting uh, University of Toronto Mississauga. I am Andre Fresigan, joined with me today by Daniel, the Saved One Mana. Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good, man. I'm really excited to jump into this one. We have about one minute left before we actually jump into uh, the action here. So we just get to quickly introduce some of these teams and what exactly they got going on. So I'm really excited to jump into this one. We've seen a lot of St. Clair throughout the, uh, the tryouts themselves. So I think this one's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I could not agree more. We got our preseason going on today. We got a best of three for you guys. Uh, what do you What do you want to see today, Daniel? I want to see a lot of new picks. Uh, new picks. I want to see a lot of comfort, and I want to see some new picks. Hopefully, some of these guys they have some one tricks that they can uh, definitely pull out. Uh, so I'm excited to jump into this one. We got the coach I Glory already standing by. He's uh, he's just prepping up the team, trying to get them excited for this match. It is a preseason, and it's also versus the University of Toronto. So we know these guys are really excited to. To bring it. Yeah, exactly. And it sounds to me, just from the other yeah, room, we can hear them for you. They're, they're pumped up. Yeah. They're excited. I'm excited. This is it. Getting into this first game here. Mm. It's, it, sh it should be a really good time, Daniel. Yeah. And the one thing I also want to see is out of Apex. Because we know when we were watching them during the tryouts, at least, he was absolutely popping off. Yes. He knew exactly how to play the map, how to play support even as the role, and knew how to play bot lane and how to control that lane uh, just super, super cleanly. So I want to see him take an active role with Blinn. I, I want to see mm -hmm. how they actually synergize with each other because I know that, of course, when you have a very active support, he's the who's he's the one that usually kind of controls that lane. He loves to just absolutely take over through comms and also through champion picks. So I, I want to see if he pulls out something like a Blitzcrank here. Yeah. So we've been seeing it a little bit at Worlds, but we have no idea if this guy has been uh, really practicing him because in uh, in tryouts, at least, he was playing a lot of the, the playmakers. Right? He was, yeah. he was playing, I think he played Thresh at one point and it was really really good so hopefully you can pull out another hook champion like that or maybe even the nautilus right nautilus is absolutely great right now with the kaisa i can go on for days about yes. all these picks i could not agree more <laughs> with you daniel uh fortunately when i was at the charts i actually yeah. had the privilege of playing with blinn and apex on the same team as yeah, myself that's great and when i'm just watching these guys and i'm playing with them you just can't help but think these guys are gonna make the team yeah. these guys are so good they played yeah. so well together they played yeah. so well individually mm. these guys they, they know what they're doing yeah so i would not expect uh, them to perform any less than that today. I also want to take a look at the the top jungle mid synergy because mm -hmm. of course we could talk a lot about the bot lane synergy but the one thing that sometimes takes the game is how the jungle and mid synergize or how the jungle and top synergize. If yeah. they can communicate effectively, if they can play certain champions together. Uh, we recently just saw, I believe it was in the uh, Damwon versus TL game, we saw the that. Yasuo, Yasuo Gragas come out yes. and they were playing a lot around that. Uh, so I want to see if they can kind of pull out comps like that where the jungle and the mid carry or maybe the the uh, the jungle and the top carry because I know that a lot of junglers love ganking top lane as a, to as a jungler mm -hmm. myself I love ganking top lane it's such a massive lane you got so much room if you want to cover that and we know in a meta just like this how early game junglers they absolutely absolutely succeed so we can see a lot of Elise we can see a lot of uh, Lee Sin Rek'Sai we've been, we've been seeing at Worlds uh, I don't know if I said Gragas but Gragas is definitely yes. up there uh, Hecarim is another one so we have all of these junglers that, that we need to, to take into factor and we need to see if uh, Active Frost can play that role yeah, I could not agree more. You touched on uh, the, the most recent uh, patches as far as yeah. early game jungling, snowballing. Yeah. Do you think that's going to be a really big factor in these games? And do you think that either of these teams are going to adapt to that and like try to play these early game junglers, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, and incorporate them into their strategy? And I, I, I do think that they need to really pull out early game junglers, right? I don't think that tank junglers are really all that good right now. We kind of moved out of that meta from Sejuani. So now we're starting to kind of see a lot more, like I was saying, mm -hmm. these Sim. We're starting to see Elise. We're starting to see all of these champions that are just really really good to play uh even against each other even the jarvan in some cases even echo uh, yeah exactly echo we've been saying that seeing that at worlds as well um but we need we need to see if these guys kind of adapted because we know di diamond players they can definitely adapt yes, especially absolutely. when you make it to diamond three it that's when you start to kind of uh, fall into that meta category you start to you need to start learning meta champions yes. in order to climb into the mm -hmm. higher diamond ranks so uh definitely i think that both of these junglers they definitely need to pull out something like this and of course comfort comfort's all that great but w when your comfort is an early game jungler it makes all that all that uh, difference yeah unfortunately uh my team of support one chick will only get <laughs> me so far up the ladder yeah uh, but that's exactly why these guys are 
at these ranks they're at because yeah. they're so good at adapting to these metas. They're so, they're, they don't just want your champion. Some of them might be really good at one champion, yeah. but they're definitely not afraid to be flexible and play certain champions in mm. these different circumstances. That, and especially today when yeah. they're going to be getting target banned because each team knows who they're playing against. Um, they're going to have to have more than their one pick today. And I think that it's going to rely a lot on the mid and top pools as well because, of course, we've been mm -hmm. seeing a lot at Worlds how... Um, some teams will target ban a solo lane, but they have kind of that like fifth pick, right? They they know how to adapt if um, if like let's just say like the enemy the enemy team will end up picking either their champion yep. or if they want to try and pick flex picks, right? All of these things are a huge possibility if they want to bring it out here. The one pick I definitely want to see is Syndra, Syndra because yes. you can you can play Syndra in the mid lane or you can also play her in the bot lane as an ADC. We saw at Worlds as well, Vagar is starting to come out yep. from a lot of Today. the Korean teams, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so ho hopefully that could also be a pick, but um, a lot of these ADCs are starting to get hard countered by all of these mages in the bot lane, yeah. and hopefully we can see uh, at least this coll collegiate seen kind of adapt to that meta too yeah you mentioned the mages going bot lane we've seen that a lot especially this entire season and one thing that also opens up like flexible picks in the top jungle mid, yeah. because you no longer have to force okay we need attack damage and physical damage in that bottom lane mm. so we need some ap coming from somewhere you can take that ap and start sending into the bottom lane yep and we're slowly going to be jumping into this one which is going to be super awesome we get to see the bands coming through it's going to be Gragas coming in for the very first band coming out here, which is uh, definitely what we need to see out of uh, some early game junglers. Also, Pantheon is something that was actually banned at Worlds too. Yeah, Pantheon. This Pantheon rework, what, what do you think about this? I, I think it's really good, even though I, I believe Simo was telling me yesterday that he got, he got nerfed, but mm -hmm, definitely a lot of... Uh, He's he's still top tier ban. So. Yeah, absolutely. He just he has so much all in potential, especially like as soon as he gets level two, he's got his bar charged up. He can literally all in just ending champion ranged melee in top lane. Yep. And sorry, I don't think the Q nerf is quite gonna yeah. cut it. And they're definitely respecting it here. Yeah, I definitely also love the the Zaya as well as the Kiana bans coming out. They're kind of trying to target every single one of these lanes. Saint Clair really trying to find what guy gives them the most. Uh, there we go. Gives them the most uh, <laughs> trouble. So try and spread all of these bands out. Maybe some one tricks, maybe whatever. But then we also see over on University, they got the Swain band. They got the Yumi band as well as the Pantheon. Let's see what these guys end up picking for their first pick. There's so many options. They can yes. definitely go for the jungle. They can go for the ADC. We've been seeing that. The Galio going to be coming out, which is an awesome, awesome band, uh, pick. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've seen Galio support. We've seen Galio mid. Where, where do you yeah. think he's going to be ending up, Dan? I think he's definitely going to be ending up in the mid lane i think the young falcon um can definitely pick that and uh, and just take it and roll with it mainly because we can see just so much synergize with that if they actually end up picking the jarvan yaswo then galio can yes, literally I go could, wherever. could not agree more we have no idea where that can no. <laughs> where that can go then but let's definitely talk about when university of toronto end up picking it yeah we see them pick up the kaisa here kaisa has definitely been a S tier, at, yeah. at least in competitive play, at least not mm -hmm. so much in solo queue, but we've seen it uh, played a lot. We've seen double lift pop off with it, and they also lock into Lee Sin. Yeah, and Lee Sin, pretty good blind pick, honestly. He's no pun intended. Yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, um, really good early jungler, just like you said earlier. Yeah, the early game junglers are coming out right now, and Lee Sin is definitely one of those that you need to watch out for because he's just so incredibly good in the early game, so good in the mid game, and usually what we see in competitive, at least at Worlds, is that the early game is non-existent for some of these junglers. Is that they can't really get around in the early game, so they need mm -hmm. to try and transition into that mid game, and that eventually turns into the early game, which is very weird to say. But yeah, Lee Sin definitely a huge Kai is going to be really good if you pair that with something like a Nautilus or a Alistar, if we can see that. But I predicted the Jarvan pick. That's going to be coming yep. out versus that Lee Sin. Jarvan Galio, super, super strong. Yes, as you mentioned before, as soon as we sell that Galio pick, we're instantly yeah. looking for really good setups with Galio's ultimate. You got the Jarvan, you got... Yeah, his ultimate there. Uh, and then you got Camille as well, which can potentially work with Galio. We haven't seen too much Camille recently, but we also see them St. Clair pick up the Tristana. And yeah. Tristana, we've seen top lane, we've seen mid lane, bottom All lane. Across. And then we got as well uh, University of Toronto picking up the Rakan to go with Kaisa as well. I love what St. Clair are doing right now. They pick the Galio to say, you know what, we can flex this literally wherever we want it. We want to put mm -hmm. it. We can put it top lane, we can put it mid lane, we can put it support. 
what are you guys going to ban now? And you can kind of see Morgana being the next ban. Uh, I heard a little bit that they were actually talking about playing the Thrash. So the thrash. I don't know if uh, if we'll get to see that ban coming out next. But Tristana going to be, I think it's going to go towards that mid lane. Because um, Tristana mid, so, so strong. Hasn't gotten nerfed just yet. The one pick I do not like, University of Toronto, pulling out the Recon. I am mm -hmm. definitely not a fan of yeah. this pick coming out with uh, with Kaisa because they had the support priority. Usually you see Kaisa with a heavy, heavy CC uh, support. And Rakan right now, even though he does have CC, he's very squishy. Yes, and that's exactly. the one thing that's kind of going to fall because Kaisa, she's again to the middle of two people if they want to mm -hmm. try and fight in this bot lane. And with, with Rakan, you can definitely do that, but the counter engage is definitely going to be yeah, really strong. We've seen so many frontline tanky champions with Kaisa, like you mentioned, like Alistar, Nautilus, Braum, and they even went away to pick the Rakan here. They had last pick in that rotation as well, so they could have easily squeezed it in before bans if they wanted to, but they're just not comfortable with it. And so, looking at this, we see them lock in Gangplank here, and that's definitely uh, going to the top lane, mid lane. What do you, what do you think here? Uh, it's definitely going to go to the top lane. I think that 1-3-2 um, one, one, is going to try and pick that up and try and just go for a farm lane because he sees what he's up against, right? He sees that this enemy team is going to be full-on engage, and you want to try and pick something a little bit more passive into something like that because mm -hmm. of the Lee Sin. Lee Sin is probably going to want to target this uh, this bottom side of the map, and I got a little bit excited because I just saw Orianna <laughs> just because Orianna yep. just got buffed. A massive, massive buff at that. We saw it a little bit of Worlds and it wasn't too successful, but maybe we get to see it here in this collegiate game and it could be very effective. Yeah, Oriana has definitely been a little bit of a sleeper the last few patches. Seen a little bit of play, but hasn't exactly defined the meta yet. And those recent art buffs that you were just talking yeah. about is maybe giving Oriana just a little bit enough more damage with her all in combo. And then we see the Syndra. <laughs> oh boy. The Syndra locked this. in here. And Syndra, Oriana, what do you think about that matchup? Uh, so the Syndra versus Orianna matchup is is a lot of fun to watch because I see Orianna as a champion that can play passive or aggressive. Yeah. Right. She loves to be that aggressive kind of control mage in the mid lane, controlling with her with her ball. But she can also play passive because she has a shield. Right. Mm -hmm. She has a speed up that can get away if uh, Lee Sin does end up ganking that lane. The one thing that I love about playing versus a Syndra is that she's very immobile, right? Yeah. So you see mm -hmm. someone like Jarvan, if you can do that EQ flash, that could be very effective like that. There's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a uh, bug going on. I think it was, um, they weren't able to switch champions. Yeah, so. yeah, we've seen that bug on the climb recently. Uh, yeah, right, it happens. Please. So <laughs> same, same picks, same bands. Ended up getting that bug, which is very unfortunate. But we, but you were talking about the Cinder versus Oriana lane. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I can't mm -hmm. wait to watch this jungle matchup. It's a lot of early game uh, junglers coming out of Jarvan and Lee Sin. So both of them, they do need that level three. Usually the fastest way to get level three is you do uh, red Krugs and then blue or... Yep. You know, vice versa, whatever you want to do. Um, now what do you think about this Gangplank and Kled lane? Yeah, I, I do love the, the Gangplank itself because it's just so incredibly passive and i think that toronto knew that they mm -hmm. were like you know what let's just pick a very passive lane let's pick something that scales up so that at level 13 that's when we can start turning on our comp until yep. then let's just chill in the top lane yeah exactly and gangplank he's one of those picks that he's so like he scales so incredibly well mm -hmm. but he's got the kit that he's able to get out of tricky situations he's got a built-in cleanse with a heal in the same ability in lane he's got movement speed just from destroying his barrels he can get in and out really quickly yeah. so it definitely makes him a, a slippery top laner that is just always the threat in the game you know he's just a ticking time bomb yeah and the one thing that's really great is that you can gank GP nonstop. It yep. is so incredibly easy to gank this lane, uh, at least as the Jarvan, because if uh, if anything happens, EQ Flash is definitely available. Kled with the bear trap on a rope is available. Yep. Uh, Kled's charge at level six is, is definitely a thing that we need to watch out for. But then even on the other side, I think that if GP can land a really good barrel, like we've seen good GPs yes. come out, and if... Uh, one one three two is a good GP. Lee Sin can definitely capitalize on that mm. lane. Other than that, I think Lee Sin definitely wants to try and focus towards this bot side. Try and get uh, absolute dragon control. Try and just absolutely take over this bot lane. And um, we'll see if uh, he can definitely do that. Yeah, I could not agree more. And you mentioned on how easy it is to gank. Not only is it to gank, but to dive. Mm. Kled is one of the best divers that we've seen in this game. Yeah. Not only can he gap close that with his E and then set up that bear trap on a rope.
but he can also reset the turret aggro just by yeah. popping his passive as well. Yeah, yeah and it, it's kind of like Elise, right? Elise is really yep. good at really good at tower diving because she can use her repel. Same thing with Kled. Kled initially starts to tank that tower, tries to dish out as much damage as possible, and all of a sudden he goes into Kled form and he can't really do anything. He can cry, he can Q and then try and run away with his little with the little stick, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's about it. Yep. Uh, other than that, I think GP has a lot of dive prevent. Uh, he has a lot to prevent to dive because he's got his oranges. He's got, you know, like you were saying, the movement speed is really good. And, and I think it's going to be a cool, cool lane to watch. So we talked about this whole entire top side. <laughs> now we got to start touching on this bot lane just a little bit. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get into that. So we got the Rakan and the Kaisa. Yep. Uh, what, what do you think of that land working together as well? You talked about right. how uh, the Rakan not exactly as tanky as you want it to be, but right. although having the CC required for the Kaisa. I think that um, it obviously would have been better if they ended up picking a Nautilus. And the reason why I say that is because Nautilus has more CC than Rakan does. Yeah. And he's also tanky. So right. So the, the auto even just the auto attacks alone from Nautilus they stun. Right, mm -hmm. and Kaisa can alt off of that. The Q, yep. Kaisa can alt off of, off of that. The the dredge line, you can't, or the the Nautilus ultimate, you can't you can't QSS that. You're, yeah. Regardless, you're gonna get knocked up and you're gonna get slowed after that. So that's why Kaisa is just so good. With Rakan though, she can, she can alt off of the W, which is kind of a, just a little bit hard to hit, and uh, also the ultimate coming out of Rakan. So it's it's definitely a nice lane matchup to go uh, together. Rakan a little bit weaker when he's not with Zaya, so it was a really good band coming out from uh, St. Clair. Looking at uh, the enemy bot lane though, Tristana versus Galio, this is going to be an awesome, awesome lane. Uh, because Tristana, a lot of engaged Galio, a lot of engaged, they just get CC to death. And this is going to be a great, I, I love this draft. Yeah, exactly. You talk, so going over the draft, we've talked yeah. about the early game. Let's move yeah. in towards the mid game a little yeah. bit. We, we got Dragons, we got Rift Herald, we got First Turret. Mm. What do you think is going to, what do you think it's going to look like for both of these two teams as far as their priorities and what, what do you think they're going to be trying to do? Starting off with St. Clair, I think that they have an amazing team fight comp. There's literally yeah. nothing that can impenetrate this because <laughs> Jarvan's going to get into the middle of five and he, that's his goal, right? He's going to try and build that tank Jarvan. I hope he builds tank Jarvan yes. because he needs to get into the middle of five and Galio has to alt off of that. That's going to be an insane uh, setup for the Orion to then throw in the shockwave. Then the Tristana is going to try and jump in. There's just so much gap close. And the one thing that's kind of scary about sometimes looking at uh, a team fight comp is can they follow up at the correct time? And I think that St. Clair can definitely do that, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll see the Galio Jarvan go in, but then where's the ADC? Where's the mid lane, right? But Oriana, she's got the ball. She can immediately put the ball on somebody and that's all of a sudden a shockwave. Tristana, she's got the ult, right? And if she, or not the ult, sorry, the W. Mm -hmm. And if she needs to get in even more, she has her flash if she really wants to do that. So there's just so many options for this team to get in, not to even not to mention the Clad. Clad's yeah. gonna be charging in from every single lane, yeah. and it's gonna be so much fun to watch. At least St. Clair. Going into Toronto, though, they have a little bit more, I think it's a pick comp. Right? Yeah. They have a little bit more of a single target comp. They've got the Syndra with the stun. Usually that only hits about one person. Uh, maybe two if you can put, place your spheres correctly. But then you also have the Kaisa Rakan. That's going to really try and get in there onto one or two. Lee Sin, the same thing. And yeah. it's kind of nice that they kind of shaped up, up this comp with the GP ultimate. That can definitely do mm -hmm. a lot of AoE. Yeah, and that being said, uh, you talked about how they definitely have more of a pick comp. They have the early game with the Lee Sin as well. Uh, I definitely think that... They have a kind of like a late game permanent win con that they can also sit on as well. Gangplank can scale really well. Kaisa can scale really well. Syndra as well. Um, but that being said, St. Clair, their draft as well. They have the Orianna, the mm -hmm. Tristana. Like their late game, like both teams' late games are so incredibly well. Yeah. I definitely think it's just going to come down to the better team wins here. Yeah, I also think that the jungler is going to play, play a huge factor into this match. Lee Sin loves to get around in the early game. Same same thing with Jarvan. The only thing is I think that Lee Sin has a little bit better of a gap close because he can, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he's got the ward hop. He's got the Q if he needs to do that. He's got the slow with his E. Jarvan, it's just EQ. If yep. you hit it, you hit it. If not, you're kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, I also want to see what the Jarvan ends up taking here, uh, Active Force. I want to see if he ends up taking Conqueror or uh, Electric U. Because I've been seeing a lot of Jarvans take the Conqueror yes. because then you can continue autoing, continue autoing. And it really, really helps you in the auto attack game. Because with Electric U, you EQ and that's it. That's your whole entire that's, combo right there, right? It. The Electric U comes down. That's the damage. It's really nice burst damage, but it's not the absolute best when you can just uh, continue auto attacking. Yeah, and you mentioned how Jarvan, it's going to be pretty easy for him 
him to get a nice setup onto Gangplank in the top lane. But if you look at the mid lane, although Cinder is very immobile, if Cinder plays the lane right, she's definitely able to save her scatter of the week just to make sure, hey, Jarvan, you're coming in on me. No, you're not. Yeah, exactly. And just push him away. <laughs> and then the whole gank is done. Everyone knows where Jarvan is. And then that kind of puts St. Clair on the short end of the stick. That's it. And we're going to be heading into the loading screen. So guys, do not go anywhere. We'll be right back with the game. Uh, St. Clair versus Toronto coming up in just a couple seconds. Oh, okay. Well, we're, <laughs> we're going to come back. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Apparently, we just had a little bit of a bug, so we're, uh, we're coming back into this one. So we were talking a lot about these uh, two comps. It's going to be really cool to see. What dragon do you want to see first? We, we talked a lot about these, uh, these dragons. And what team really wants to get it here? Well, obviously, I think both teams would definitely prefer to get an Infernal Drake for yeah. themselves. That being said, if they don't have the sure. priority around the dragon, I'm sure that they hope that it's not Infernal Drake. Yeah. Um, but that being said, yeah. <laughs> Both of these teams, I think all four dragons are pretty well. Obviously, yeah. Infernal being at the high tier, as far as generally That's speaking. It. But I don't see either of these teams really going for kind of like a split-pushing comp. I think that both teams want to kind of group up. Mm -hmm. One team wants to look for picks more than all-ins. Yep. Uh, so I think that would definitely put the Air Drake on the lower tier yeah. as well. Um, <laughs> what, what, do, what do you think about this? I mean, yo, any any dragon is great just to just to see uh that all come up but hey we're heading into this one this is gonna be awesome st Clair college versus university of toronto mississauga as i was just uh, quickly corrected game number one of this best of three and i think that we definitely need to introduce these teams coming in onto the blue side we have st Clair college lord Lord in the top lane, active force in the jungle. The young Falcon coming in at mid lane. Blin on ADC and supporting him, Apex Snipes. Yes, and for Toronto Mississauga, we got 1-3-2 ADS in the top lane on Gangplank. Alkazer, Lee Sin in the jungle. Perks fanboy, mind you. Uh, <laughs> Perks. Syndra in the mid lane. And then uh, Amishio and Ash Ketchum, the duo in the ball lane on the Kaisen Rakan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be an awesome match. Yeah, uh, both teams so far. Got the line of scrimmage going. Neither team going in for an invade. I think that's pretty safe. You don't really have a Blitzcrank, Morgana mm -hmm. Thresh. Nothing to really catch anything out early. And I love this five-point star coming out from both of these teams. Uh, it's something that's very passive. You you basically plug in every single path of uh, of the, the jungle and also the mid lane Lilyasin going over there. I want to see where these guys end up starting. No, how do you think it's going to look like, their pathing? Right, I think that Lilyasin is definitely going to try and start around the top side. Usually uh, both junglers love to start near their red buff because at least uh, for Jarvan, he, he loves to get this red buff early. I think both junglers love to get red buff early. I think that's kind of surprising is that Lilyasin is starting top side with no leash. He can definitely do that if yeah. he starts the correct ability because Lilyasin is Super, super strong at doing that. But uh, other than that, it's going to be a lot of... Um, let me think. I think that's probably... Lee Sin, at least, might try at a level 2 skirmish. You can kind of see him pathing towards that top side. Mm -hmm. Krugs is definitely also a possibility. You can go red Krugs into blue side jungle. Uh, Jarvan, same thing. You can go red Krugs into either a bot lane gank, or you can walk all the way to your blue side jungle. You can get a very early level three. We were touching a little bit on these lanes themselves, and you can kind of already see the effects of the top lane coming in. Yeah, we mentioned uh, as far as where they're starting, and something that kind of went unnoticed was that Toronto Mississauga actually placed a ward on the chicken camp of J4, and they saw exactly yeah. where he was starting. Good and although you mentioned how Lee Sin didn't get a leash at level 1, Gangplank went straight into lane, and we saw the fake leash yeah. from the Rakan and the Kai'Sa ball lane. So St. Cloud College had no vision of the Lee Sin, uh, probably until right now. He's about to be spotted on yeah. that ward right there. But So they had no idea where he was starting. It's a little bit weird, too, because obviously St. Clair can't exactly see this, but Lee Sin actually had to go back to his Krugs because he wanted that extra little Krug that ran away. So it's a little <laughs> bit of time being wasted coming in from Lee Sin, but what's really nice is he's trying to do this vertical jungling because he wants to try and invade the Jarvan. However, you do see Syndra going over to this blue buff, so there's a bunch of communication going down. Oriana knows that Lee Sin is around this area. Jarvan going to quickly spot him. Let's see how this one He's turns He's going to have to try to finish up really quick here, and both of them being level 3. Uh, yeah. So we saw Jarvan with the full clear in the bottom lane. Yeah. Went for the recall. That was a little bit of a, I don't know, debatable situation. But although he does get pretty uh, weak after clearing his Krugs and his mm -hmm. Raptors, uh, definitely understandable. Yeah. And 
you, mind you, you also have to keep in mind, they thought that he was starting blue side. Yeah. Because we saw the, as we mentioned before, the Kais and the Rakan fake leashing by and GP going straight into lane. They thought Lee Sin was out of his blue buff, so they thought, yeah. okay, there's no way he's taking my top jungle right now. And the reason why Jarvan wanted to clear the Raptors there is just to kind of reset that bot side so mm -hmm. that they both spawn at kind of the correct time. Young Falcon in the mid lane, and he gets stunned. Yeah, so you know, Lee Sin lands the Q and gets the flash out of Young Falcon. The Ignite burn oh. from Cinder as well. He's going to go for a little bit more damage. The Ignite, oh, the last cool. tick! Finishes the Young Falcon. First blood going over to Toronto Mississauga. Yeah, and a nice stun coming out there in the mid lane coming in from uh, from Syndra. Nice little uh, nice little communication coming down yeah. there. E excellent gank from Alc there. Uh, getting that Q on the young, on Young Falcon. Getting the flash before he took the second Q. Mm. Definitely helped him secure that kill. Every little bit of damage mattered there because as exactly. you saw, Syndra had to back off there, but we see a little bit of trading going on in the top lane. A uh, little bit of an Eve matchup. Mm. Thing. You see Gangplank getting the Corrupting Paw, right? Why, why don't you go uh, a little bit into that as far as the Corrupting Paw versus Doran Starlet? Why, why do you think both of them opted to go for these? Two? I think that Kled was looking for more of an aggressive lane. Uh, one pot is fine enough for, for Kled because you can easily go back early if he really needs to. Mm -hmm. GP usually because you spam you spam the Qs okay. uh, in the lane uh, and you want to try and get as much gold as possible uh, like that. Yeah, we see both the junglers here sitting in the river. It's a little bit interesting here because you see them both in Alkazer is just going to walk up, dismounted Kled. Kled Ooh. almost... Whoa. One more hit would have given him yep. the Kled there, but that was an excellent flash. I think that was the correct call rather than greeting for the, greeting for the last auto attack there to bring back Skrull into the fight. I 100% mm -hmm. respect there. I, I would have done the exact same thing. Low touched me, just barely going to slip away. Yeah, both of these junglers going into these side lanes and trying to get off literally whatever they can. Uh, Jarvan went into the bot lane. The only thing they ended up getting was a Kaisa heal. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the top lane, Lord ended up blowing his flash. So it's definitely a little bit of a better trade coming in from uh, Toronto Mississauga. Uh, definitely really good on, in that front. What's really nice to see in the mid lane, though, is that Orianna is, is starting to play a little bit more passive. Yeah. Right? Uh, because sometimes what we see is Syndra absolutely take away the game if she ends up getting one kill. And what's nice is that Falcon is not letting her do that. Just trying to play mm -hmm. passive in the mid lane. Try and farm up just a little bit better. And uh, we'll see what it, what ends up coming out of that. But uh, we need to see a little bit more action out of these junglers. And I think mm -hmm. that Lee Sin is really looking towards that top side. Yeah, I think Lee Sin so far this game has definitely done a really good job at showing his early game presence. We talked about how these early game junglers are definitely making more of an impact in the current meta right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little bit of training going on the top lane. Kled probably going to walk away yep. with a little bit of advantage of that. But as you mentioned before, we got Gangplank with the Corrupting Potion. Yeah. Going to give him that sustain. We talked about early Drakes, what we wanted to see. We actually got an Infernal Drake there here. Go. Going for the first one. And St. Clair College is going to try to get, get ahead on that. But yeah, look at this. No vision on the Drake. We just see Purse yeah. Fanboy coming in to grab a little bit of Honey Fruit. And oh boy, Young Falcon getting a caught out. Scatter the Meek and the Ultimate from Syndra f finishing her off there. Yeah, also a really good kill coming in from Tristana as well. We see a <laughs> giant logo in the middle of her screen. It's fine. Uh, Cinder trying to look for literally whatever she can here onto Tristana. Tristana going to be able to jump away, which is really good. Red buff being taken by Jarvan as well, and that's going to be Infernal going right on mm -hmm. over to Toronto Mississauga. Yeah, I definitely think that was a little more of a questionable call. And oh boy, we see Active Force caught in here. Going to have to flash out of the pit. Uh, Ignite burned from Ash Ketchup. Not too too bad of a deal. I definitely would take that trade every day of the yeah. week if I was University of Toronto, but uh, I don't know. I definitely think it was a little bit of a questionable call there because we saw mm -hmm. that Oriana didn't exactly have priority in the mid lane. Uh, we didn't know that... Uh, we didn't know where Syndra was, we didn't know where Lee Sin was, and they were on the bot side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a, a really nice uh, kind of follow-up coming in from Toronto. They definitely know how to at least surround a dragon and communicate effectively in order to take an objective just like that. Syndra really, really strong. Even though she's only got one assist, definitely played a really big role in that team fight. It's very unfortunate that Oriana couldn't really be Oriana yeah. in that fight, which is very unfortunate. We now get to see the gold lead coming through for each of these lanes. The Syndra Definitely huge, huge lead coming in 600 gold. Also in the bot lane, Tristana, really good for her. Ended up netting herself yeah. a kill at the start of that fight as well. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. We, have, we see a little bit of a CS lead towards the Tristana here. Uh, wave is about matched even right now. You see Kaisa shoving it in right now. But that early kill on Tristana, I think that Blin is going to have to kind of, you know, pull a little bit of weight on his back here because... St. Clair doesn't really have much going for them right now. We see Alkazer going in to steal the blue buff. Is he going to get it? He goes for it. 
And Jarvan ends up stealing this. Balkis are gonna all in the active force instead of the blue buff. Active Force just barely slipping away. Scatter oh. hit in the J4 and at least lands the Q and finishes Active Force. Glad gonna charge in here though. Yeah, Glad's gonna come in absolutely with just everything. A little bit of a question mark ping going down onto him. A little bit of BM. That's absolutely <laughs> fine <laughs> though. The University of Toronto Mississauga getting yeah. that early kill there. So what, what, do you, what do you think about this? What do you think both of these teams are going to have to... Do you think they're going to have to change anything? Do you think yeah. they're, they're playing to their win cons really well? Well, the one thing that I was talking about in Champion Select is how how are the, how is this mid-jungle duo going to uh, synergize? And we can already see out of St. Clair that theirs isn't really all that good, right? Uh, Orion is getting hard camped in the mid lane, and Jarvan can't really do anything about that. But on the other front, this is, this is what Lee Sin is playing off of. Yeah. They, he knows that his mid lane is destroying, and he has mid lane priority. So that's what he's ultimately trying to go for. Get into the enemy jungle so that uh, Syndra can follow up uh, with just uh, through sh sheer communication is what we end yeah. up seeing, right? Just like, hey, come, in, come into the enemy jungle with me. We're going to try and get a pick and we know exactly where Jarvan is because we have absolutely warded up this jungle to the perfection and mm -hmm. they were just able to predict that yeah, really nice. You talked about the lane priority and we've definitely seen that so far. University yeah. of Toronto Mississauga playing the lane priority game really, really well. They're going for roams into the enemy jungle. We see Lisa invading blue buff. We see them going around the dragon when they have the lane priority. St. Clair, they're trying to do the same thing as Mississauga here, but they, they just don't have the lane priority that they need to do that because you see the Orianna roaming. We see the J4 trying to take Drake, but their lanes are being shoved in mm. and then they're not able to respond as quickly as Mississauga. And I think the one thing that St. Clair need to play off of here is their bot lane. Like, they're absolutely destroying in terms of gold, in terms of CS, even though it is only like a 5 CS lead. They can eventually turn that into something a little bit bigger, and you can see mm -hmm. how Tristana's items... She already has a BF sword and a pickaxe. You look over at Kaisa, and she has a tier and a pickaxe. So it's, mm -hmm. it's there's a clear, clear difference in terms of gold lead uh, in that regard. So I think that's what Jarvan needs to start playing around. He needs to stop worrying about this mid lane too much, because Orianna, regardless, is going to scale. We know that Orianna with the Shockwave is going to scale regardless. He needs mm -hmm. to try and take over this bot lane however he can. Doesn't get hit by the stun, which is really good, but he needs to start doing stuff around the map. Yeah, exactly. And now we see 10 minutes into the game, we see the Rift Herald spawning. Yep. And we've, what we've seen a lot in Worlds recently is that a lot of teams Switch. are starting to rotate yeah. their bottom lane to the top lane, trying to get that extra man around that Rift Herald. And so far, we don't see any of them doing yeah. them just yet. Do you think that they're going to start playing around the Rift Herald, or do you think they're going to wait until the next Dragon spawn? So one thing that Lee Sin did over on SKT is what he is uh, he solo took it. Because his top mm -hmm. side was winning just so heavily, he ended up just going, saying, you know what, let's just, I just need to take yeah. this myself. I don't need to rotate my bot lane. I don't need to be clutch. Mm -hmm. Let's just take it solo. And I think what Lee Sin can do is maybe try and focus this mid lane and then maybe transition into something like that. Yeah. But other than that, it could just be Lee Sin going towards this bot lane, trying to get this dragon that's going to be coming up really soon. It's going to be another Infernal as well. So I think that Toronto uh, Mississauga is going to be really good. Yeah, you mentioned on how SKT's top lane was just snowballing so hard that he was able to solo here. Don't exactly have that luxury yet because in top lane, although we do see that really big CS lead on the gangplank here, Kled is can very easily respond to that as well by charging in. And if you look at St. Clair right now, like that Tristana, Tristana has the lead over the Kai'Sa right now. So mm -hmm. I definitely can see why they're still trying to play around this bot side. They're trying to get that Infernal yeah. Drake. I would not be surprised if St. Clair, after taking this Infernal Drake or after whatever happens here, sends them up there because Tristana right now definitely has the edge over the Kai'Sa. Yeah, just try and uh, try and camp this bot lane, see what you can do to that uh, enemy tower. But right now we see that this dragon has huge, huge priority. Active Force, we'll see if he can actually go in here. Oh, Lord touch me, you're gonna charge in on the clay. He actually rotated down to the bottom side of the map. Mm. Apex Snipe not gonna connect with the... Get Bear trap, though. There. Oh, barely gets out of that one. But then look at this, they're going all in on Rakan. Here, Rakan, Lord touch me is gonna take down Ash Ketchum. Perks fanboy gonna return a little bit of damage onto Active Force. Not exactly gonna do much there. That's gonna be a one for zero for St. Clair. And a little bit of damage going down onto the Syndra at the end of that team fight. I feel like Toronto, they wanna go for another fight at that. Lee Sin, we'll see if he can land anything. Shockwave being... Yeah. Oriana gonna just throw out the Shockwave there. Not quite gonna connect, but look at this. We got a five versus four here on Gangplank mm -hmm. Ultimate coming in. Blue team is gonna get the oh. Dragon here, but look at this, they're all inning right now. Apex Sniper gonna fall as well. Or excuse me, Apex Sniper already fallen. Lord touch me as well. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, def I'm definitely going to have to come up You're with good. a nickname for that. You're good. You're uh, good. Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perks fanboy ended up getting two kills at the end of that team by netting himself a double kill, which is really, really good. Active force now. Going to just turn around, go right towards that red buff, right? Just try and uh, and reset but like i was saying earlier you don't need to rotate your bot lane for something like a uh, like a rift herald when your top lane has massive massive priority over it they're gonna immediately start onto it and we'll see what lane ends up getting collapsed on next yeah it doesn't look like st Clair is trying to do anything about it right now we're not even sure if they know about it because they don't exactly have any vision we saw gangplank walk up into the top side and being spotted on that river bush um but Masaga is just going to take that Rift Herald for free here, and St. Yeah. Clair isn't exactly doing anything to return that. They're not getting anything out of this. What's good is that Jarvan didn't end up dying in that last fight. Right? He yeah. kind of netted himself a little bit of an assist, which does mean a lot. He's, he was able to finish off the uh, the Cinder Hulk, got himself a little bit of a Ruby Crystal at the end of that as well. So he's not on the same level as Lee Sin, but we now get to look at different items that are being finished up, right? You see in the top mm -hmm. lane, Kled going for the Phage into Tiamat, which is absolutely amazing for him. His counterpart part, um, GP though, ends up getting the Triforce. Yes. That is absolutely huge. That's a huge power spike coming in uh, for for GP, but uh, we also got to look at this bot lane. Again, mm -hmm. Tristana not dying by the end of that team fight, netting herself in assist. Just means that she was able to finish off the IE, and it's really good facing off against something like Kai'Sa because Kai'Sa does take a little bit of time in order to mm -hmm. finally scale up. Uh, but as for, as for Tristana, she's got immediate burst. She can immediately yep. go in just like that. Yeah, you mentioned earlier in this game on how the Recon isn't exactly going to do the job as a tankier support with like Braum, like Nautilus, yeah. like Alistar. And we've sort of seen that early. Like we haven't exactly seen Rakan Kaiso do very well into Galio Trasana just because of how safe that lane is and yeah. how easily Trasana is able to farm up. Yeah. And uh, also mentioned before how J4, how easy of a lane it would be to gank top lane, but we haven't exactly seen much action in the top lane so far. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate in that regard. Lee Sin, though, coming towards the top side. Try to get a dismount here, and Lee Sin landing the Q, and Alk Azer is going to pick up that kill for one for zero. They might end up getting the turret here as well, as we don't see anyone from St. Clair on the top side of the map. Rift Herald being put down as well. Lee Sin targeting literally the priority lane. Kled just feels so forced to do something, and that's such an unfortunate mm -hmm. scenario, but the bot lane got the first tower, baby. That was a really good rotation. A, now, I love it. As small as that is, that's actually huge that's here, huge. because they're not gonna get anything from the top lane. They might, they're probably going to end up taking two turrets here, so at least they're able to get a little bit of extra gold getting that first turret there. Uh, good for St. Clair, but yeah. that being said, uh, they definitely gotta try to do something about the top side of the map here. But that being said, 20 minutes is coming up soon. We're gonna see the Baron come up. That tier one falling, well, why don't you tell us about how you think about that? That's going to be huge because now immediately GP has full on control of this top lane and I don't, I, like obviously he can switch lanes with uh, with the ball lane if they really want to, but I think what's going to happen here, GP is slowly walking back towards that top side. He wants full on control of this lane because he already had it. A GP at 16 minutes when you're level 11, mm -hmm. you're completely fine, right? Usually yeah. level 13 is that power spike for GP, but if you can get it even earlier, you can try and take over a lot of these side lanes. And you can see GP, again, now going back towards that bot side. He wants to try and take that tier one if, if really possible. Dragon, the Ocean Dragon, going to be coming up in just one minute. It is an absolutely massive, massive objective. Mm -hmm. If they want to try and put all full-on force onto that bot lane, you can kind of see Kled not having the TP. Right? He yeah. doesn't have his charge, so he's going to try and slowly maybe rotate down here or just try and get this top lane tier one. His movements were kind of confusing me a little bit because he pushed out that top lane and then yeah. backed off. Now he's going back towards that top lane. So we have no idea if St. Clair just want to try and give this up or not. Well, it looks like that University of Toronto Mississauga might actually be looking for a dive on the young Falcon Aww. here. The turret's very healthy, but oh, Cinder whips the scatter of the meekly sin here. Going to get the kick, land the Q. Young Falcon Lee. barely getting out of the shock. It doesn't quite go off. Lee. Young Falcon is going to fall there. And that looks like that's going to be another turret for University of Toronto Mississauga here. Super, super clean. You shove Orianna in a side lane, and that's such a bad thing to do when the enemy team wants to focus this bot side. You're sending your weakest man bot, yeah, and that's not what you want to do versus a Syndra Lee Sin, as well as a Recon from what we just ended up seeing there. But Dragon going to be coming up. Active Force! Going to use this full combo to get in there. Okay, so landing the Q on Active Force, but not going to take it. 
Good, good use of uh, mental there. Uh, we, usually we see a lot of Lee Syndrome yeah. there late in the queue. Oh, I landed in the queue. I better take it. But uh, yeah. yeah, they're going to be starting Ocean Drake up right here. Oriana trying to make her way over there, but it looks like University of Toronto and Mississauga is going to be doing oh, a little more charge. damage with the charge coming in here. Rakan knocking up the Kled. Active Force being pushed away by the Syndra, and then, oh my goodness, Perk Stamboy going on a rampage on J4. Lord barely, barely getting... Oh, oh he doesn't quite get out. He doesn't get the Skrull back. Apex Snipe also going to fall here as well. That's going to be... Four for zero there, as well as the Ocean Drake in favor of University of Toronto Mississauga. However, we're not done yet. Young Falcon landing the shockwave. Oh, doesn't quite okay. finish the lease in. He's just going to walk away. Yeah, just just to get away. Nice shockwave being landed. I think this is one of his first being landed this whole entire match. <laughs> so it's really good. Starting to see a little bit of consistency coming out of the Young Falcon. But it's kind of, kind of unfortunate that, that Toronto is starting to absolutely take over this mid lane. Uh, they've got all of the priority towers except for bot lane, so we get to see maybe that fall in just a couple of seconds if that can if they can do that. But what I want to see out of Toronto right now is them not be scared. Yeah. Uh, because Baron's coming up in just a couple of seconds, about a mi about 30 seconds even at that, and they they're in a perfect position to actually take it. They could they have they don't really have a tank, but they can definitely trade the aggro through the GP through the the Rakan. And mm -hmm. uh, they've got, honestly, the part perfect targets in order to take it. Lee Sin takes Baron perfectly. Uh, Syndra has a lot of zoning, so she can put her spheres in the river if, if needed. And as well, Kaisa, she has her passive. That does so much damage to Baron every single time you reset it. She also has the Rage Blade. So th it's a big objective that mm -hmm. they definitely need to focus down. And if they can try and force it, if they can try and... Uh, and go around it and try and set up for it to be a really good objective. Yeah, we see a, about a 6k gold lead in favor of University of Toronto Mississauga right now. Baron spawning up right now. That being said, there's outs for St. Clair. We see the shutdown gold right now on the entire side of University of Mississauga. We got 200 gold oh on JK. Like 300 on Lee Sin, 400 on Syndra. <laughs> arguably the squishiest target to take down. There's a lot of outs. That's a lot of gold that can go in favor of St. Clair. Look at the gold lead between each of these lanes. Top lane, almost 2k. A 2k lead. In the jungle, it's one. In the mid lane, it's almost three. That's mm. absolutely yeah. two or three, two or three. It's definitely, definitely insane. Yeah. The one lane actually keeping up is the Tristana. We've been talking yep. about this Blin Apex uh, lane so much because they've just been so good together as a duo. And also, uh, I don't know, they just they just know how to keep up in gold. They know how to keep up in the CS. Yeah. I was talking about the five CS lead turning into something. It's already turned into 20. a 20 yeah. CS lead. So you can kind of see how that uh, slowly snowballed throughout this match. It's honestly on the back of Tristana. If, if Jarvis can start building tanky, if Clay can start building tanky, if Orianna can pos position correctly in fights and allow Tristana to really get the resets and start to pop off, that is when St. Clair are going to start winning these some of these team fights. It's a 6k lead so far for Toronto Mississauga, so they got to start doing something fast. Yeah, I could not agree more with you, Daniel. We saw a gangplank actually go even up until this most recent team oh, fight. Hang on a second. Perk Stamboy going to land scouter than me called Galio. Galio nice. going to quite... He's going to get out there, uh, get a little bit of damage reduction there and yeah. just... Yeah. That, that being said, we see the the ultimate is now gone from Syndra, so potentially, if I was St. Clair College right now, they didn't burn anything on getting yeah. out there. This this could be their opportunity. Why not? Here. Yeah, they definitely have that opportunity. Galio still has uh, Hero's Entrance if they do want to use that. The Tristana was just sitting mid lane, just trying to farm up as best as possible. You put Kled versus GP, even though Kled cannot face against GP in a match like this, you're just kind of, you're putting down a wall in that ball lane. Just allow uh, the Kled to take as much damage as possible, try and prevent the GP from taking anything more than a tier one. Oh. Jarvan gonna land right here, and Blaine gonna hop in. Flash from Syndra, and the Lee Sin is gonna come join the fight here. It looks like the Mississauga's gonna try to turn this. The Gangplank coming in here. Ami Shield is gonna land the W on the Tristana, pick her off. Active Force is gonna fall as well. That's potentially Baron. Yeah, definitely a really nice double kill coming in. Jarvan missing the EQ, and sometimes when you play jungle. The shockwave from Young Falcon gonna take Ami Shield down to about half health. I don't think that's gonna change their mind on Baron here. Apex Snipe and Young Falcon hovering around the top side. Clay is going bot side, though. He has teleport available. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start with the Baron. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to try and start up the Baron here. We'll see if uh, it's going to go down anytime soon. The charge coming in from Kled. Mm -hmm. See if that does anything Probably huge. Gonna charge right here. Baron still has 6k. Going to go on to Ash Catcher. Ash Catcher, I'm going to all knock up Apex Snipe here. Galio's all being cancelled as well. They're trying to turn this. Perks Fanboy is going to mm -hmm. go unstoppable on Orianna. Galio's going to fall as well from 1-3-2. Lord Touch is going to... 
dismount there and get fallen as well. And that is definitely going to be bearing here. However, active force. He's back up now. Do you think he's potentially going to go for a steal here? I think that if he passed correctly, then he can definitely try and do something. Like I was saying earlier, is that Syndra is really good at defending off this Baron. Baron now at 6k HP. We'll see if he tries to do literally anything, and he can't. They send Blin towards the bot side to try and clear that. Maybe try and get priority around this dragon, but that's Baron going over to the side of Toronto Mississauga 23 minutes in. Yeah, 23 minutes in. 10k gold leads, 16 to 2 in the kills. Got a boundary break now. We're getting a little bit of variety from the dragons here. I don't. What do, what do you think? What do you think St. Clair can do to try to get back in this game? It's super, super hard, right? Like I was saying earlier, is that they need to play around this Tristana, but when Tristana kind of gets picked off, or at least when the rest of the members of the team get picked off and Tristana mm -hmm. cannot get into the fight, it's just super, super unfortunate when uh, they just can't get the team synergy down. Right? I think that's St. Clair, that's exactly yeah. what they're missing, is that they don't have they don't have jungle mid synergy all that well. They don't have jungle top synergy all that well. I think the only lane that's really effective together is this bot lane. They know yeah. uh, how to play with each other, they know how to play against literally anything. Um, and I think that they need to try and play off of their main priority lanes, uh, at least going into game number two. And in, in this game, however, I think they didn't just need to try and get any sort of picks if possible. I'm going to say the famous color caster line, they can still come back. <laughs> and I think they're going to do so just by trying to get as many picks as possible. Literally even trading one for one. Because look yep. at the shutdowns. Yep. It's 300 gold, Lee Sin, 300 in the top lane, 600. 600. Bonus gold. <laughs> Bonus gold, exactly. So it could literally, anybody that kills Cinder can get a thousand gold. Yeah, and literally that's, that's incredible. And that's, that could be potentially a whole recurve bow. That's almost a BF sword for the Tristana. That could definitely Dude. Be, almost be enough for Blint to try to come back into this game. But look, one thing I've noticed in these team fights, Daniel, is that we see J4 go in, we see Galio go in, Oriana's trying to get the shot away, Klez charging in. No one's back with the Tristana. Yeah. And that, that's a really huge issue because when Blend is your win condition at this point, you need to make sure that she stays alive. And then you just see the Rakan and then Lee Sin just dive onto that Tristana. Mm. And I, I don't even think Tristana's even in these fights. That, that's the one yeah. thing I was thinking. Active Force, though, the charge coming out. Charge coming in from Clay here. Alkays are gonna tr go all in here as well. And Perks is gonna take down oh, the Galio <laughs> Hero's entrance, gonna get that huge knock up. There we go. Ami Shio gonna take one and try to get out here. Lord is gonna go back onto the Kaisa. Galio CC in the Ami show as well, and oh that's a triple goodness. kill for Kaisa. Oh my goodness, Quadra for Kaisa. That looks like that fight was going to go into St. Clair's favor, but the Kaisa just completely 1v4'd that whole fight. Blin, uh, I feel like Blin's positioning was just a little bit lackluster there, because he ended up jumping into the guy who ultimately ended up killing him at the end of the day. It's a 10 second respawn time coming in from Active Force. Other than that, that's a ball lane inhibitor going down. A uh, very, very productive Baron power play from Toronto Mississauga here. Getting that entire bot side, the Earth Drake, the gold from the Baron itself, whole ace, and now they're taking mid turrets as well. They're playing this really, really well. I really think that they're executing their win condition. Yeah, I, I just, you know, like, I was talking about this earlier is that a, a level 13 GP is going to start to scale, and he also had a really, really nice laning phase at the. Um, coming in from Leeson as well. Leeson yeah. trying to camp this mid lane. He knew exactly where to go. I think initially what I was talking about was uh, it's all up to these junglers where they're going to go and you can really see how that's a huge, huge mm -hmm. effect. Leeson not really ganking the ball lane honestly all that much. He just really tried to prioritize this top side of the map and try and shut down this Clyde and he was able to do so. He was able to shut down the yeah. Oriana as well. And then off of that, their bot lane was able to play off of it. So it, it, literally, it literally wasn't even leasing camping bot lane or even mm -hmm. ganking the lane. It was literally just the top side of the map winning. So automatically the bot side, if they literally went even in lane, they were they automatically won that lane and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly. When you're a scaling champion like Gangplank, when you're a scaling champion like Kai'Sa, if you're going even, if you're not losing, you're winning. <laughs> if you're not losing, you're winning. That's the quote of the day, ladies and gentlemen. As we see University of Toronto slowly pushing out this top lane, we'll see exactly what they can get. They ended up getting a tier two top lane with that Baron. I don't actually think they, they had Baron. I definitely like I the 4 1 that they got going. Yeah. Though. You see the 4 1 gank bike in the mid lane. He doesn't exactly have a really far way to go. All he yeah. has to do is hit a barrel, go to top side if he needs oh. to try to fight. And, but look at the minions yeah. coming in from the bottom side of the map. They're going to have to send one, if not two people, to respond to that. And that's when 
Toronto Mississauga is probably gonna go in. Active Force in the top lane, they're gonna go in. And Ash Ketchum gonna ult as the Rakan. Active Force gonna go in, ult to Syndra. Syndra's gonna flash out, scatters the Meek onto the Tristana. Tristana gonna have to flash uh, out. Whiffs. Some uh, arrow. Oh yeah, unfortunately, Amishio gonna barely, barely not kill him there. The Lord Touch is gonna fall as well, as well as the Galio. Two for zero. And that might be enough for them to win this game. They're going to rotate over to the mid lane here. Or no, excuse Even me, the, the bottom lane. They're going to go for the Nexus turret here and try to finish out this game. Yeah, and we'll Active Force going in as well. Getting the knockup. Blinn is going to slay Ash. Oh, catch him there. Oh, oh. oh boy, Amishio is legendary. <laughs> taking out J4. And that is going to be game one in favor of University of Toronto Mississauga. That's it. 25-6, to 6, University, of, <laughs> University of Toronto Mississauga. Game number one, 57k to 42k they take game number one with ease really nice game being played by them yeah i definitely think that they did a really good job snowballing that early lead that they got on the Lee Sin and the syndra and they just completely took over the game you saw syndra die one time that entire game and that was in like the most like second most recent fight excuse me mm. and i don't know I, I definitely think that what we talked about in champ select as far as the win conditions for these teams i definitely think university of toronto mississauga did, did it better yeah it was just all around, I think that their um, their synergy with uh, the jungler in the mid and the top was just absolutely perfect. And I think yeah. that's what ended up winning them the game. Uh, the ball lane just had to stay even. Literally, just go zero zero zero, mm -hmm. and you're will end up winning this match. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Yeah, if you're not losing, you're, you're winning. winning. That's it. There we go. So I think at the end of that one, I think we can actually send it off to a break because we've been talking for a while. So let's try and catch our breath. We'll be right back with uh with this match university of toronto mississauga versus st Clair, after coming up in just a little bit <laughs> 